and the Ukraine and Cuba. The next two nations to come into the ring and into the centre of the Haydar Aliyev Sports Arena here in Baku, Azerbaijan. Vasil Lamachenko of the Ukraine, 23-year-old featherweight Olympic champion up against Yasnia Toledo of Cuba, the Cuban national champion and a very, very stylish southpaw. There's a good close-up of the Ukrainian boxer. Lomachenko, lucky, many will say, to be here, putting in a protest after the quarter-finals against uh, Robson Conciado, 2019, and then the decision was tur turned, and the warning points that were given to Lomachenko taken away, and the Ukrainian able to progress to the semis, where he showed his skill to beat Valentino of Italy. Castle, two really contrasting fighters here. Toledo, rank three, Lomachenko four. The Ukrainian, very powerful, hard-hitting, classic-style boxer. The Cuban, a real stylish southpaw. He is. I mean, both of them, too, quite consistent. Lomachenko's last two bouts in this tournament, he's won by a score of 18 to 10. Toledo's, 15 to 10. So they're nothing if not consistent. It's going to be very interesting to see how the Cuban, Toledo, can handle the world's best at this weight class. Well, in years gone by, there were 11 weight divisions in Olympic and uh, International Amateur Boxing Championship. It's now down to 10. And both of these boxers were from the featherweight division, now just putting on a little bit weight um, to go up to box in the lightweight category. Yeah, this is going to be good. You know, in the pros, a critical part of the game is early on to find the boxer, the best, easiest opponent to ensure success. The key being to delay the moment that your boxer's ability is exposed. Well, it's showtime now, and Lomachenko is the type of boxer that can and will expose Toledo's shortcomings if they exist at all. Well, a massive amount of experience. Lomachenko brings to this bout in the red corner, of course, Toledo of Cuba in the blue. Twice a world champion and Olympic champion at the featherweight and a world junior champion to go with it. Just 23 years of age as well, Lomachenko. He's had a rapid rise to international fame and stardom in the international ranks of, boxing, of amateur boxing. And uh, is the hot favourite, I have to say, to get the better of Toledo here. But Toledo, like all of the Cuban fighters, just has this fantastic natural ability, confidence and style that has upset so many at these championships. You can see right away Lomachenko coming out, throwing punches. He's not going to waste any time. He knows better. He's been in bouts at this level before, and he's definitely pressing the action, bringing the bout to the Cuban and letting him know he's going to stand in his grill for a full nine minutes if necessary until he gets his way. Good jab work from the Cuban, and the Cuban's counters are equally as fast, equally as powerful as at Lomachenko. But you're absolutely right, Castle, looking the more aggressive of the two in these early exchanges. But he's got a long reach, Toledo, and that's what he needs to rely upon to keep Lomachenko at bay. Slightly taller, certainly longer levered athlete of the two. And it could be some... A slight case of nerves, perhaps, for Toledo also. I mean, he is... Oh, he's down! What a fantastic hook from the Ukrainian. Watch here in the slow-mo replay. What was really special about that knockdown, Nick, was that it was about four or five punch combination to the body by Lomachenko. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was softening up the midsection of Toledo so that he could come up with a big right hook to the head. He got the Cuban to drop his hands, and then just on cue, he nailed him with a right. And that right was a hefty blow from Lomachenko, and Toledo now really does need to dig deep to try and regain his composure, regain his confidence, and get back into the rhythm, because Lomachenko really has got the bit between his teeth. You said it right at the beginning, 
He came out after the belt at the start of this first round like a bull in a china shop, and he hasn't stopped since. Yeah, I mean, like I said, he is going to expose whatever weaknesses Toledo has. Right there, it looks like Toledo for one, weakness, maybe a case of nerves. He's going up there, going in there against the best in the world. But two, it looks like he's not being aggressive enough, and Lomachenko is winning the battle of wills. Again, going for that same tactic, body shots and then the big right hook. Oh, Toledo. Digging deep, what a first round, what a sensational start to this lightweight bout. Crowd enjoying every moment of it and let's hopefully get a slow-mo replay of that uh, spectacular right hook from Lomachenko. When it does come, watch the body work first. Watch how Lomachenko goes down to the body with three or four punches at a time and then upstairs with the big right hand. He knew what he was doing, perfectly executed. Well, what a sensational first round for Lomachenko. Surely the judges have got him up against Toledo of Cuba. Let's get confirmation of the scores and there it is, three points clear. Remember, if he gets up or he's okay after the count of eight, the bout continues. That's one of the big differences from the amateur to the professional ranks. But uh, Castle, surely now Lomachenko brimming with confidence and he's going to deliver more of the same for the Cuban. Sure, but let's not discount the Cuban. The first thing I want to point out, if you saw between the rounds, the corner of Lomachenko looked like they may have been tending to a slight cut on the bridge of his nose. Maybe just a sign that at the end of that round, despite the knockdown, that the Cuban was getting to him with that long jab, and it came out in the first of this, the beginning of this round, he may have caught him again. Toledo needs to work behind that jab, and he needs to keep his distance to keep Lomachenko off of him. Same combinations from Lomachenko. Three, four, fast blows to the body, looking for that right hook. So effective in the first round, not quite so in the second. Again, inside is not where Toledo wants to be here. He needs to get on that stick, ride that stick, double it up, triple it up, keep the hard-pressing Lomachenko at arm's reach away, and then, when necessary, come in with that big uppercut. Lightning-fast combination by Toledo. If he could get that one to land, he's going to definitely keep Lomachenko thinking. Uppercut worked nicely there for the Ukrainian in red. Powerful combination from Lomachenko. Yeah, you've got two southpaws going out of here. Always nice to see that when it happens, but again, they're both used to it. They're mirror images in that regard. It's like shadow boxing in the mirror. Again, those one-punch leads by Toledo, not going to get the job done here. We've said it consistently. I don't know why his corner hasn't urged him more to work behind that jab. If he continues to chase Lomachenko around the ring, Lomachenko's going to make mincemeat out of him. 20 seconds just over to go on the clock of this second round. And again, I've scored Lomachenko consistently higher than at Toledo throughout this second three-minute round. I'm very impressed with Toledo. He's come back with tenacity, having been put on the canvas in the first. But counting down now, just a couple of seconds, there's the end of the second round. And Lomachenko starting to take control of this men's... Uh, lightweight final
Doesn't want to sit on the stool either, Castle. He seems ready just to get back in there and carry on for more. Yes, he's been doing that throughout the entirety of this tournament. You know, part of it may be psychological to show your opponent that you're in good shape, that you're not going anywhere, that you're going to be back in that next round as sure as you were in the last. Otherwise, it could just be because he feels more comfortable keeping his legs stretched. Either way, the Cuban sitting, the Ukrainian standing in between rounds. Well, better punches, and uh, I would say more points on the board for Toledo, but it's difficult to have Toledo up against Lomachenko in the second. And the question now is, what's the difference? Well, 5-4, just one point advantage, but uh, Lomachenko now going four clear of the Cuban out of the blue corner, going into the third and final round. So we'll need to see some very special, some real fancy foot and handwork from Toledo if he's to turn the tables on the Ukrainian. And you saw right out of the gate, he threw out a double jab and then another jab followed by a right to the body. The jab is his best friend right now and he needs to continue to do it. It will set up everything else for him. Well, the Cuban winds up the intensity and uh, Lomachenko matches it. Yeah, Lomachenko is just a special type of boxer. Don't come around very often, his type. And when they do, you have to appreciate what you're seeing in the ring. He's pure poetry in motion, a pure boxer-puncher in the truest sense of the term. And he is both boxing and punching beautifully here in the third round. And the shorter boxer, Lomachenko, feeling very comfortable in there, clinching with the taller Toledo and throwing punches in the clinch. And why not? He's made a habit of that his entire career, throwing punches at all times. Ciel Lomachenko is always first to punch in the, in the clinch and always last to punch in the clinch. He's completely unfazed by the taller man. Oh, wonderful again. The right hook connecting from Lomachenko. Minute to go in the third and final round. Caution to be careful with the head. Well, both boxers have still got fuel in the tank here. It's not a question of Lomachenko just dancing around the ring and keeping out of trouble. He wants to finish it and finish it with style. Lomachenko, nothing if not a good closer. He's a really good finisher. He's got less than a minute, in this case 30 seconds. He's up on the points going in. It's going to be very hard for the Cuban to snatch this. Down to the last 20 seconds from in the red. Lomachenko came into this third and final round with a four-point advantage. Both boxers have put in Another magnificent performance. The same ferocity in the last dying seconds of the match as there was at the beginning of the bout. But for me, Lomachenko has done enough as the bell goes. And is that good enough for Vasil Lomachenko, the southpaw from the Ukraine, to take his second world championship gold as he moves up from the featherweight, no longer a division in Olympic and World Championship boxing into the lightweight 60 kilo category. Or has Toledo done enough in that third and final round? I'm just totting up here in the box castle and I've got Lomachenko clear. Yeah, I think that it's um, going to be very hard for the judges to give this one to the Cuban, particularly since the third round was much like the first and second and Lomachenko just a bad, bad man. <laughs> Rough and tough. Well, the Ukrainians coming into these finals, the most successful nation with five boxers in the 10 finals, and there it is. 
Lomachenko takes the gold for the Ukraine in the lightweight division. And another boxer to watch out for at London 2012. 17 points, 212. Five clear of Toledo of Cuba, who takes the silver. A little closer than perhaps many of us thought in the third and final round, but consistently winning all three to take the gold. And clearly Lomachenko well deserved of that tattoo, if you happen to notice, on the inside of his left, of his left bicep, the Olympic rings as a stark reminder of what has been and what he hopes to happen once again. Очень сложно психологически, потому что, в принципе, очень сильно нагрузило после боя с бразильцем. Когда, в принципе, я и вся наша команда думали, что я выигрываю. В конце концов, я пришел в конце второго раунда. Оказалось, что я проигрываю. Пришлось много сделать работы для того, чтобы вырвать этот бой. Но, в конце концов, как бы не, не отдали победу. Но, в принципе, не расстроился, потому что я сам для себя был удовлетворен. Я сделал все для победы. Я отдал себя полностью. У меня не было, в принципе... Никакой мысли там по поводу себя, чтобы я там себя винил в чем-то. И вот, в принципе, после этого боя немного меня, конечно, психологически подломало. Я выходил уже на следующий каждый бой и думал, что, ну, как бы все судьи будут против меня. И, ну, чуть меня это зажало, конечно. Я не продемонстрировал. А, ну все, так все. Вот 